Welcome to Comfy Havoc number two. I am Echo Fan Grey Wolf. You just saw four versions of my suicide note. So, this is the second time I'm going to do this just to make sure everybody is clear. Echo Fan Grey Wolf is good. I am great. I am going to graduate from school soon. I am going to do some more live Instagram, some more TikToks. I got shit that I'm getting ready to do. All right? I feel a shift in the wind. I feel that my life is about to really, really start. I feel that everything after graduation is just going to fall into place. We're praying. We're praying. And if not, we're going to make that shit happen. Um, also, I have 199 people here today. I just checked it earlier today. So, hey, one more person joining my TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, anything social media of mine is one more cog in that bag of hope that I carry around. All right. Understand that you guys are my hope. You guys are my reason for doing this. You guys make me want to keep going. Even at 49, even though I've aged out of everything, hey, I still have this, man. Every damn day that I take a sight at that sun is a blessing. Every day I see the moon at night, every star that I wish on, man, I got a lot going on right now. And I have so much reasons to be positive. So that songs, I had a bad moment, but it wasn't recently. I just had to think, I was thinking, and I was like, you know what? I bet you no one's ever wrote a song about why people write suicide notes. So the long and short is, each version of the song is really giving you hints on why people write suicide notes. Most people write suicide notes because most people are not being listened to. They are not being heard. They are being ignored. And the worst part of that is they're being ignored mostly by the people who love them the most. And when you hear somebody mention this shit one time, one time, not nine times, not ten times, not twenty times, because they need help too. But that motherfucker that only says it once and never brings it back up, and if he starts giving away or she starts giving away all their worldly possessions, I'm selfish, so I'm not giving away shit. Not Hello Kitty, not my panda, not Alf, not Gizmo, no, none of that shit. All that shit's going with me when I die. All of it. Because I'm getting cremated, so all my shit's getting... No, I have a will. It's on my other laptop. But, you know, it's not really to be engaged at any time soon. But it is there. It's a living will. It's on my laptop. It's just not notarized. I haven't printed it out. And basically, I put my older sister and my cousin Russell in charge. So, this is a living document now. You can't, you can't doctor this shit. Anyway, so I wrote the song because... The things I've gone through in the ass end of 2022, you know, with all the deaths that recently happened in my family. And I got to thinking, you know, and one was by suicide. I got to thinking, you know, people never address why people write suicide notes. They address what's in the suicide note, but they never address why people write suicide notes. They really don't. And as a person who's been there, I'm not ashamed to say I've been there. I literally been there. And see, most people, when you tell them that shit, it's like, oh. We don't believe you. I said, because you don't fucking know me. You know what I allow you to know of me. All right? That's what people fail to understand. If someone's writing a suicide note, it's because no one asks them what's wrong with them. Not just in their brain, but in their soul. See, people who um, talk about suicide, they're in pain. They're in a lot of fucking pain. And the problem with that pain is they don't know how to express that pain. I didn't know how to express that pain. I think I may have issues before I joined the Army, but when I had to leave the Army because I didn't want to leave the Army, I wanted to leave the Army in a body bag, straight up. I don't give a damn who says what about me, whatever. At Fort Benning, Georgia, I had one problem in Delta, I mean Bravo, and I got hurt. And getting hurt ruined my career before I could end. I fell in a fucking hole, and my life was over. My entire life was over. I went into the military at 37 years old. I have an honorable discharge. I am a legal vet. I never got deployed. The point being made is that I didn't want to leave. I wanted to stay in the Army until I died. I had nothing to live for. I literally, if I was going to die anywhere, that was the place to be because I won't die somebody of color that people can just assume that I do drugs because I've never done drugs outside of alcohol. I smoked cigarettes until my dad made me eat one, but I wasn't really smoking. I was puffing and inhaling because I thought it was going to get me some ass from girls, and it made me look cool. The only damn thing it did was make me look like a fool and push girls further away because they only like the big guys. I'm a small guy. I'm 5'3". The only thing I had positive in my life was martial arts. I made a webisode series that got stolen. So everything in my life was mega negative until I got to the Army. 
And at, at first, at the beginning, in Bravo, everything was great. And then I fell in a fucking hole. Fuck you, Fort Benning. If I hadn't fell in that hole, none of these videos would have been made. Because I would have been fine. I was infantry. I got all the infantry training. I know how to unalive people and no sweat off my balls. Because this is what they taught us. Period. I went to golf because I got fucked up and missed some training because I had to go to therapy for my knee. Which magically wound up being my hip, not my knee, but because my knee swole up like a cantaloupe and I am a genetic freak, we didn't know that my hip was getting damaged the entire time. I also learned that stress fractures can kill people because there were people who were like barely 20 years old that was getting discharged medically for stress fractures. I was like, well, damn, they must not have got a lot of milk. But I didn't have that problem. I was like setting records at 37. I was like, yeah, it's the first time I've ever done anything in my life that I actually set a fucking record in something. Anyway, so got through that bullshit. Got to golf. Wanted to kill a drill sergeant named Drill Sergeant Walsh and some other little scrawny motherfucker that looks just like me, only white. And he kept, they kept abusing their powers. So I went back to Bravo and I refused training. And I was like, if I go back over here, I'm going to kill that motherfucker. I don't give a fuck because he's like 25 years old. Yeah, he may be great with a firearm. Motherfucker, I fight. Now, let me explain that because everybody's like, well, you got, they got military training. Um, the shit that they were teaching... I knew way more before I got there because back when I was like 15, 16, I was taught about Green Beret, real army shit. The shit that I had to learn, they watered the army down. Now, the shit that I got my ass kicked in, that was Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I got my ass handed to me quite a few times by somebody taller than me. Every time I tried to mount this motherfucker, he'd fling me off of him like I won't shit and buy it in. I was at my, my highest weight. I was at 140. And I loved that guy. He didn't love me as much because... I showed him some shit because I couldn't mount him and he could mount me. When he mounted me, I couldn't get him off me. So I had butter him in a dick. He didn't like that shit, but that was the only way I can get him off me. And it's like, man, you can't do that. I said, hey, look, I'm what you're, what our drill sergeants don't know. I've been street fighting since I was six years old. I beat people like you for breakfast on a fucking daily basis, man. It's like, what? That's impossible. You saw what I just did. Therefore. So I had some issues. And then I failed to qualify with my rifle. So I got an honorable discharge for failing to adapt. But I didn't know that my leg was fucked up that badly. We found out at fucking um, McGuire because Fort Benning dropped the ball. So everything's good. Like I said, I got mad positive shit to live on. But had I not joined the Army, I would not be here. I would not be here. The Army gave me purpose. Nobody loved me more than fucking Delta Company. All right? I love Delta Company. Drill Sergeant Haynes, Drill Sergeant Auburn, Drill Sergeant Amisqua, Drill Sergeant Farisco was my age, so he's probably about to retire. If he's smart, he'll just stay the fuck in there. Age all the way the fuck out. Because I would have never left. I, I wouldn't even have took rank. I would have stayed a fucking private. I would have got private fucking, like, three chevrons. Done. E3. I would have been happy with an E3. I don't have a family. I don't have any wife. I don't have any children. So I wouldn't have been making a lot of money. But I would have had a family with my unit. Which was all I needed. So when you talk about people who want to commit suicide, it's because they want the fucking pain to stop. If they keep mentioning it over and over and over, it's not because they want to die. They want you to save them. They don't know how to ask you for help. That's the problem. So when I got discharged, I got depressed real fucking bad because I felt like a motherfucking failure big time. I talked to a few vets, and it's like, man, you still a vet. Don't worry about that shit. You were man enough to sign the fuck up. And most people won't fucking do that. He said, yeah, those are the guys that steal our girlfriends. He's like, you right. Those are the punk motherfuckers that steal your girlfriend. And I was like, well, luckily for me, my girlfriend dumped me long before I got there. So, but yeah, you know, there, there are, like, communities where if you're a vet and you need to talk to somebody, you fucking go ask for some fucking help. It's, it's a lot easier for us vets now. Because when I first got out, man, like for two years, I didn't know what the fuck to do. I dealt with depression for two years. I drank every fucking weekend for like two years straight. Whatever money the army was giving me, it went straight to the Biltmore. Shout out to the Biltmore for taking care of this soldier. And then, you know, my money ran out. And I think if my money wouldn't have ran out, I wouldn't be where I am right now. I would have became a full-blown alcoholic. Then I bumped into my old friend. And he made me rock that red suit right there. And then that suit were actually... That blue suit is what we rock now. But that red suit is what we got started first. 
because we went to my first Galaxy Con in Richmond. I usually only went to the um, Omega Con down here in Charlottesville, but then we went to Galaxy Con. The first time I went there, that's where I saw my crush. That's, that, I still am dreadfully in love with my crush, the Double Z wrestler Zeta Zang. I am going to marry that girl or die trying. Anyway, so the next time we went, you said, oh, we're going again, and you're dressing this time. And I was like, nah, dude, nah. He's like, yeah, dude, yeah. And Scarlet Spider, he's like, pick somebody, anybody. And, you know, I thought to myself, okay, I'm going to be cheap. I'm going to be Scarlet Spider. That costume does not exist. Yeah, it did. I just had to buy the fucking vest. I gave him the money. He bought the rest. I bought the vest. I even bought this fucking, like, glass helmet-like thing. It's, like, plastic, but... It was, like, hyper bigger than my head, and it didn't have a back. So, yeah, that kind of fucked that up. It's in the shit somewhere. But anyway, thank you, Courtney. Anyway, after that, you know, um, I was the Scarlet Spider. I never felt so much joy in my fucking life than when I kneeled down to these little curly kid, black kid, who was mixed, like me, and he smiled at Scarlet Spider. Didn't give a damn what it looked like under this mask. Didn't care if I stank, which I didn't, but he didn't care. I never felt that much love. I made three kids cry, though, because I, I had this, this one white kid. He wanted to take a picture with me so bad. And so I was like, got down beside him. His ass started crying. I was like, well, I just brushed my teeth, so it can't be my breath. I know my arms don't stink because I showered before we got here. So it was it was awesome. It was awesome. And I thoroughly enjoy cosplay. It is probably one of the other other things that makes me happy outside of martial arts. And I had so much fun. Now, as for the other two kids that was crying, one of them was also black and the other one was white. And they were so enthusiastic. Hey, I got a picture of me on a fucking damn, um, on He-Man's cat, man. Who gets to do that? You don't get to do that. And you can't do that if you fucking off yourself. So fight for your life. I'm fighting for mine every fucking day. And every time I go to cosplay, those suits, man, those suits, I feel so alive in those suits. No one sees ugly ass Echo. No one sees ugly ass James. They see a fucking hero. And I live up to that thing. I stay in my character until it's time for the lights to go off. Y'all have no idea how much that shit means, man. Y'all have no idea. If you're not a cosplayer, start cosplaying. It, it will change your life. I swear. It will change your life. It will make you want to do more shit. Now, on the end of this, you know, um, I'm good. I'm good. These are not smiles of anger. This is actually adulatedly joy and bliss because I need y'all to understand. Oh, shit. I'm looking forward to the next cosplay. Cosplay is the one thing that keeps my ass alive. Cosplay, Halloween, anytime I get the chance to dress up, I'm taking it. Understand that shit. I am taking it. Because I never, ever knew how good it felt to be a cosplayer until I started doing it. I used to watch all the cosplayers at all the, the cons that would come here and get your 60-day ticket. So you're there for Saturday and Sunday because I didn't know they came in on Fridays and you know, they stopped doing it here, but Galaxy Con's still growing strong. Yes, Galaxy Con. So, I'm going to Galaxy Con. Come hella high water. I'm going to Galaxy Con. If I got to fucking walk there, camp inside of a fucking tent, I'm going there. Anyway, so, when, when you start dressing up, you become part of the most phenomenal shit you will ever know in your life. Thank you, Cosplay. Thank you, Courtney. Thank you, children, for letting me be these spiders. And more importantly... Thank all of you guys for being here. And yes, Monday Night Monologues will be coming back. I just got to find the time. You know, like I said, I'm focusing on graduation. I am focused on graduating, period. I am hard-pressed focused on this shit. So give me some time. Give me some time. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank all 199 of y'all. Thank you. I'm one away from 200, y'all. That wasn't even a goal. I was happy with 198, but I'm good. I mean, hey. The more the merrier. And if you guys have any ties to Marvel, you might want to tell them my mouth's a little foul. But we can work on that. And even though I may never get to play Spider-Man, I'm always down to be Wyatt Wingfoot or any Native American character because it's time for me to make another video about that. So, 
Thank you guys for watching. I am Echo Fan Grey Wolf. This is Comfort Graphic number two. B, C, and U.